Right, we are now joined by our resident analyst, Clive Ramatibela Smith of Inkunzi Investments, to unpack the ocean economy and, and just how much it really could contribute to the economy. Clive, as always, thank you very much for coming through to join us. Let's start off by taking a, a general look, really, at Africa's uh, ocean economy and, and, and how it's performing. It's not doing well, and it's not been exploited to the very supreme where it's supposed to get to and what's happening is that it's becoming more and more difficult because we are facing uh, crimes in the ocean lines of African continents you've got pirates and Somali pirates and all this and it's making it very difficult for investors to actually put money there mm -hmm. however we can say that the ports that we do have open and you, you know just now recently we saw the Somali um, 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 uh, army and, 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 and the AU getting involved in what took place when they were fighting off those rebels and they were able to get some of the uh, ports under control within the southeast and uh, in the west and the east side of, of Somalia. So that makes it a bit easier, Florence, if, if, if anything. But it still means that we're still dealing with a lot of crime and, 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 and corruption within that particular sector, and it's not easily identifiable. But how, how do we deal with that? I mean, I can imagine that there's a difficulty in dealing with, uh, you know, crime mm. and, and corruption mm. within in the sea, you know? You know, Flo, you know, it's, it's like what you're trying to do in actual fact is you're trying to find out where the gaps are. Mm. And where the gaps are, you find that those are the most productive, but they cannot actually go off because of the fact that there's so much corruption and mm -hmm. thick skin, red line and red tape over it. So what South Africa has done, for example, is opened a few more ports to enable it to actually grow. But in those particular African countries where they're reliant on one sea channel, as opposed to South Africa, which we've got three sea channels. Are you aware of that? It's amazing. So we are able to actually interact. You know, it goes, it goes back to how Jan van Rive got to South Africa goes back to how the India trade used to take place and how we used to be um, working and the Indian people would love this because that's when the sugar cane came into context and that has gone away so what's happened now is we're not using it for just travel and logistics we're using it for also for manufacturing development and skills um, and we're using it also to, to, to run uh, businesses so it, the, the port industry the ocean industry has changed it, that's where we get oil and gas now and people are exploring those ideas and trying to bring them on board but it's it, the question is how far can you take it because if you only concentrate on South Africa then you don't get the entire African continent L let's talk about <coughs> uh, you know your thoughts on Operation Pakisa and uh, um, what targets need to really be set out there yeah South Africans will love this because when I thought of Pakisa I thought of Matawe you know <laughs> but the, the idea the idea behind Pakisa was, you have to remember, it goes back to about eight years ago, when we actually understood the fact that we're not utilizing our ports appropriately. Right. We're not actually gaining as much uh, of the GDP growth that we require in our ocean, bas an ocean basket of, of economies. Yeah. So what do you do? You try and make sure that you put evaluations, you understand the ports much better, you understand the operational side of it. You try and see where the manufacturing can be partnered and where the business is going to come from. So government has identified four key areas, for example, that will actually be able to participate in the economy. And that might just contribute heavily because they're talking about things like increasing employment from what it is now, now is 319,000 people. They can take it all the way up to one million direct jobs mm -hmm. that are linked with it. You're talking about marine surveying or marine manufacturing. You're talking about manufacturing and development within the sector. You're talking about logistics and travel consumption. So what we're referring to there is ports that are open for open trade and travel. And then also the most important one that I think maybe that's something that everybody must look at as well is the development side of it all and developing entrepreneurs. How do we reach that uh, consensus and how to make sure that, that that bridge of the GDP is actually built? Now, I want to just talk, you know, you're talking about uh, operations and so forth, but I want to sort of look at the, the, the real sort of... Um, difference in terms of uh, the ocean economy where it differentiates uh, uh, to other sectors like IT or, or telecoms and and really sort of uh, how the how the two should be operated yeah. uh, you know obviously it's different sectors but you know in terms of operations how do we operate them differently so when you talk about internet for example you're talking about things that are cy cyber yeah. cyber technology yeah. where things are very electronic yeah. when you talk about ocean uh, economy you're referring to things that we probably take very little cognizance of, but actually play a vital role in the economy. For example, the contribution of having trade ports, for example, where we get our goods and receive our goods cheaper than if you were to do air, 
or travel, air travel. So you've got to take that into consideration. You have to take in consideration things that are a bulk package that take hours and hours and engine just packaging and that wouldn't be able to be carried by a normal aircraft or a cargo craft that would be able to do that. So those are very important. But we can go even deeper and, and start looking at gas and oil exploration, for example, where uh, the guys go in and dig in. We've got uh, Exgeno, Ex which is a German company which is already there. We've got uh, Shell from um, Total, actually. Total from France, yeah. who are already exploring um, oil and gas exploration in, in our oceans, in Durban specifically. So those things are very important. And we take very little concern of them. But what they mean is we can get our oil directly from our very oceans instead of having to go to OPEC and always wait for the rand and dollar right. exchange to affect our production. So that's very, very important. All right, Clive, it's always a pleasure having you with us. That's Clive Ramatibela-Smith of Inkunzi Investments.